Broadcasting from Hollywood, California, it's Grant's Rants, Hollywood Talk. Leah Remini is everywhere talking Scientology. We react to the Beverly Hills Housewives' first look. Oprah's favorite things list is here, and we can't believe what made this list and what we want for ourselves. All that and more with Blake V next. Let the ranting begin. I'm sitting across from Blake V from AfterBuzz TV and more. Blake. Hello. How's it going? It's going so good. I'm very excited to be here. Thanks good. for having me, Grant. It's going to be a good show. Oh, I feel I, it. Yeah, I feel it's it. It's going to be good. So I'm glad to have you in. Of course, we are no strangers sitting across from each other at a table. We've been working together at AfterBuzz TV covering the Real Housewives of Orange County. For what seems like a hundred years. A long time. A very long, a long season. Time. So my first question for you is, does Brooks have cancer? No, just kidding. <laughs> No more cancer talk. I literally can't even talk about it anymore. I can't. It's been the question plaguing us for months. It's like the only storyline going on. I mean, we were having like dreams about it. It's It's terrible. I I don't know how to talk to you about anything else, actually. (laughs) So this will be good. We're going to break out of the the Brooks cancer mold. Yes. Right here. Right. (laughs) So, um, Blake, I want to talk about really quickly. You are you are so Cal native. I am. Very rare on this podcast. There's a lot of uh, people who've come here from other places, but Orange County. Yes, a true Orange County native. Yes. That is me in nice. the flesh. Nice. <laughs> yeah, um, I was born and raised in uh, in Orange County in the Laguna area, and my parents still live there in the very same house that I grew up in, and so I like still have very strong roots there. <laughs> yeah. Very strong ties. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, another Orange County resident from years past uh, is Gwen Stefani, of course. Gwen we all Stefani. Know she's one of the more famous people coming out of the OC, right? Can she you say is. That? Very true. I'd so, say she's like the biggest representative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's in the news, of course, and it looks like she's dating. She is. It's confirmed. Confirmed. Blake Shelton. And everyone's talking about this. Like, it was all over my office. Like, everybody is talking about this. It's on every page six, the front of E, everything. And, I mean, if, to me, it's just does, it doesn't really register. I, I really... Interesting. I don't really uh, care too much. I like her. I, I'm all about her. But, you know, I don't listen to country music. So, yeah. to me, Blake, I, I know of him from The Voice. That's about it. I can't name a song he's done. Yeah. So, he you know, really is a country music star and all his songs are on country stations. I also don't listen to a ton of country music, but I am familiar with a handful of Blake's songs and they're really freaking good. Yeah. Like he's a very good, um, I'm assuming he writes his songs, I don't know for sure, but if so, he is an extremely good uh, like pop songwriter. His songs don't even sound super country. They're like really pop-like and really catchy and awesome. And so that angle I could easily see. Um, Gwen identifying with because she's such a good pop songwriter, you know? Yeah. I mean, I could probably get behind that so, that type of music a little more. I'm just not like, I didn't grow up with country yeah. music. It's just not anywhere near me, you know? I no, just don't totally. know anything about it. Well, it's funny too because the origins of country music are like so twangy and hillbilly mm. and like southern and it's really hard to identify with if you've never been around it. But now, like now country music is so pop. It's yeah. like pop has just infiltrated the whole thing. If you turn on a country station right now, like a local LA country station, you're gonna be hearing pop songs. Yeah. And they call it country. Remember when Taylor Swift was a country artist? Right? <laughs> the, back in the days? Yeah, yeah. Completely. See, and she's full pop. But yeah. she still gets country cred because she originated from there, I, I guess. guess. Yeah. So it's a whole thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's called country but it's completely transformed i mean there's like right so much crossover well i was looking at an article and gavin rosdale of course blake's soon to be ex-husband is still wearing the wedding ring i saw the same thing today during the same time that all this public hoopla is out there about their you know mm-hmm. hooking up pretty much so um who the hell knows i don't know i like when i just don't see this as a pairing but hey i guess it shocked everybody right yeah yeah it truly did but you know with the whole gwen and gavin relationship like they've been having problems for a long time like they've been in the tabloids going to um you know relationship therapy and like all kinds of things and it's been you know reported and i hate to bring it up because it breaks my heart but gavin has been in the tabloids for having like you know, extramarital relationships, mm. bisexual relationships. Like he's had this whole past, and I well, yes, yeah. Well and then, I, Gwen, good for you. See, that's the thing, and so I tend to be on Gwen's side of that. Like, you know, maybe when she married him, she thought it was going to be fine. The marriage was going to be free and clear of all this, and then like it just kept persisting. And like, you can't, you can't hang with that. Yeah. So I feel for her. Mm. I I think that uh, Blake is 
awesome <laughs> yeah. for her. I like it. I'm for yeah. it. I'm for it. Uh, I'm curious to see where it goes, and I'm curious to see if it affects the ratings for The Voice at all. Because oh my god, I'm sure it what will. What better promotion can you ask for? And then it's not even like a scandal. It's just like a celeb, like you know, get together. But so it's not based in like you know anything slimy or gross. It's just you know two people that found one another. Yeah. And for, music. for once, it's almost like it happened after each of them divorced. Mm-hmm. So so there really wasn't that scandal aspect to it. Because there's so many celebrity, like, you know, oh, they caught him cheating or they yeah. caught, you know, all this stuff. And no, this one was, like, really cut and dry. And it just, it was what it was. They each were divorced. And now they're together. And don't we all want to tune in and see, like, their chemistry? Yeah, what yeah. What it's like? For I'm sure. super curious now. So another person that's all over the place, and I mean everywhere, is Leah Remini. Yes. She's talking oh about gosh. this book. She's promoting it, but she's not even really talking too much about the book. She's talking about Scientology, which people find just to be fascinating. I know I do. What do Utterly you fascinating. Oh, my God. I'm just, like, supremely interested in all of this. Leah Remini or anybody else, like, I am just, I'm enthralled with it because I think it's just so insane (laughs) that I want to know everything about it because I'm like what is this like what is this happening and it's so prevalent in Hollywood too it's it really is it's it's in your face you know it's it's in your face for sure you see the signs you see the pamphlets there's like movie tickets on the street to go see Dianetics the movie Mm -hmm. like it's it's oh it's around I have a really funny Scientology story if you're interested yeah no I'm I'm interested let's I've been hearing uh Leah's all week it's just the same (laughs) couple stories so tell me yeah this is sort of relevant. So, um, so getting started in you know the the industry or what have you, um, you go on many random auditions, as you probably know, for really anything. And you're starting out, and you don't know what you're doing, but you're like, yeah, I want to try to do whatever this is. Sure, let's do it. Yeah. So, I remember that one of these auditions that I went on years ago, probably five or six years ago, um, was being held at the Scientology Center, but they didn't advertise it as such. They only Hmm. listed the address of where the audition was. So I was like, okay, cool. It was like a fashion show or something like that. So I go to the audition. Turns out it's at the Scientology Center because I'd never been to it. I didn't know. I arrived at it and it was the weirdest audition because they held everybody in one of their like ballroom centers at the Scientology Center. Mm -hmm. They did the audition. Everybody went through it but then afterwards they wouldn't let you leave until you watched um this this like promotional scientology video and then afterwards they made you do like a tour of the facility and then let you leave yeah Yeah. Yeah, wow. it was very ballsy. And Did I just you remember, have to, like, yeah, I've, I'm sure you had to give, like, your, like, license or ID or did you have to fill out stuff? You know, surprisingly, no. Um, wow. It was relatively, you know, anonymous when mm-hmm. you went, but it was just, like, they, they sort of held you captive until they were done with you. Wow. Like, you couldn't really... Uh, decide when to get up and leave. It was like, no, no, you have to watch this. You have to do this. And then finally, at the very, very end, it was like, all right, we've we've pushed all this information onto you. Now you can leave. So for me, yeah. I didn't even end up getting the gig that I auditioned for. And I was like, man, I just had to spend like four hours of my life at this thing. Wow. Um, it was a bizarre experience. So That's way too much to put on someone. You didn't sign up for that. No. There was no knowledge of that. Didn't say like, you know, there'll be like, you know, even something like a reception after it was ridiculous nothing just a pure audition I it was know. one of the craziest things i've ever been to was this in the big blue building the big no blue. it was in the celebrity center oh what was it like in there i've heard different things it's gorgeous it's like a it's like a retro look i mean it's it, it was a originally built like a chateau right, in like right. the 19 i don't know 40s or 30s or mm-hmm. something so everything is like original on the inside but um, very well kept. It's like lovely on the inside. It just like looks like a lovely old hotel kind of. Mm. However, I would actually really like that, but yeah, I'm not, they're not going to see me. I know, and it's only on the surface too because it's like they've got like you know they've got like hidden rooms and ballrooms mm-hmm. and things, and and the feeling is not very warm. It's just kind of oh, creepy. Yeah. Well, for me, yeah. <laughs> for no, me, I was I, like, what is this? I worked with the guy who toured that. Celebrity Center, yeah. and they I, I mentioned this previously, that they went downstairs and there was, like, fake wallpaper that looked like a dungeon. It looked like bars, you know, on the oh, ground wow. underneath, and they had to sit and they had to watch a movie, and they said the yeah. movie was, it was, like, a little uplifting, and then it kept taking, like, dark turns. Yeah. So that's how it, it was? It totally was, yeah. And there wow. was a whole, um, like, a mind game, too, in trying to to go through the tour and gather, gather people, because the whole thing ended with... 
will you pay money to come to one of our Scientology courses? They wanted to sign people up at the end of it. That was the end game. So it was all like manipulation and sort of like, oh, well, you you came to this gig, so you must want to get into Hollywood. Well, we can help you do that. So sign up for one of our classes and we're going to help you with your career. Oh, yeah. And the funny thing was that as, as we were walking out the lobby as I was leaving, I saw Danny Masterson in there. <laughs> so I did have a celebrity sighting there. There you go. I made it worth it. Got something out of it. it. Exactly. And that's actually like a really cool story, like, just because, like, I would never step foot in there. No. You know, and you obviously didn't do it willingly. And yeah. you, didn't, you weren't involved, but yet you still got this information. Yes. And you got out alive. And I you know. got out without having to give, like, you know, your social or anything. You know what I mean? Like Completely. Yeah, I do feel like I had a very... Um, uh, singular experience, you know, like it really wouldn't yeah. be common for everyone to get that. So no, my my tiny piece of inside knowledge. I like it. I like <laughs> it because Lee has been everywhere, and I've heard the same stories over and over. While they are fascinating, and why I do, while I do love hearing about Scientology and, and just kind of the inside perspective, because for a while we haven't heard too much up until now. Never, really. it's like so yeah. closeted it's so, all this yeah. information. So now it's getting really interesting, but. I do feel like she has really milked this a lot. Like, she's on every... I I wrote it down. This is just what I saw her on this week. She was in People Magazine on 2020, NPR, Access Hollywood Live, Watch What Happens Live, Good Morning America, and Stern. Great. Quite a list. And that's just kind of what came into my orbit, you know, while looking and researching it. I, I, I get people at work, so I was looking through it. So it's like... She's really, you know, making her career about this. So when it all, I know, but at the same time, she's saying to people that say you keep capitalizing on this, you won't get over it. She says, look, it was part of my life for three decades. Like, give me a minute. It's going to take me a while to get over it, which I can understand. Completely. I get it, but it is kind of a little excessive, like over and over. She's talking a lot about it, and not, I feel like for someone who's on a book tour, the focus just isn't on the book. Mm-hmm. You know, so I wonder what a publisher thinks about that. <laughs> But everyone's talking about her. She's everywhere. Well, and, you know, I think that she's extremely likable, too. And that's the thing is, you know, we've we've seen some of these, like, big Scientology members like Tom Cruise or John Travolta, who in our minds are now, we look at them as crazy people, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they've got this this sort of, uh, you know, tainted... uh, you know, yeah. vision or sort of presence because I feel like, you know, they, they've been stars forever and everybody loves them. But mm. now it's like, ooh, they've, they're like strange because they yeah. are acting weird with and all this Scientology. Yeah. But Leah um, is not. And she is super likable. And everybody knows her from King of Queens and she's adorable and hilarious. And I am a huge fan of her. So I think that, you know, people who, who like her and are maybe skeptical about Scientology or any form of organized religion are really kind of on her side. And they dig all yeah. this information that she's yeah. giving to us. Because even if, even though she made all these um, appearances everywhere, I'm about it. I'm still right. listening. It's right. very interesting. And she's got an interesting experience because she grew up in it as a kid. Yeah. I think that's sort of the difference because a lot of other people have fallen into it in their adult mm-hmm. life, trying to fix their career right. or whatever it is they're trying to do. The thing that got me the most with her, the, the story she spoke of the most, of course, was Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes' wedding. And she saw inappropriate behavior and she wrote different people up. And you know, she thinks that she was doing this to better the church, to call out kind of hypocrisy or call out mis misdoings, you know, and bring it to light, but really just came back to hit her in the face. Yes. So she was trying to actively like look out for the church. So I mean, you know, I, I I do give her credit in a way. Of course the church says, hey, you know, all this is just her trying to get attention and none of it's based in fact. But really the same stories come from different people. Mm-hmm. A lot of similar accounts how I mean, you know, if stories kind of add up, you know, when yeah. there's smoke, right? I you know completely. Mm. And and the thing too is, um, her appearance on 2020. I watched it and I saw that at the end they had a little sound bite of Kirstie Alley, and she was like, anybody who says that Scientology is evil is my enemy. And I just thought, well, why? Like, why is that? Why does that make someone your enemy? Why do you want enemies? Why? Why are you a part of an organization that is encouraging you to have enemies yeah. if I people know. are against you? That's like that sounds awful. The, I know that's the part of the culture there. Even yeah. Tom Cruise's adopted children, they have no relationship with Nicole. They, they, you know, they swear about her. They say bad things about her, because, allegedly. Which is awful. But, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know. 
she is their adoptive mother and they have right. no relationship. So yeah, it's a weird culture, mm. I, I, you know, but it's really unraveling. Right. And, and just so fascinating. Like yeah. regardless of how much we may not agree or understand it, it's just like, what? It, what is it? Like I'm, I'm right. like, just so fascinated. Yeah. <laughs> and of course living in Hollywood, it's more prevalent to us. And of course if you're living in Clearwater, Florida, you see it, it you know, they opened up a brand new place in Milan. I was on their website, right. but I was I was on my work computer because I don't want to get my SSL. <laughs> I mean, my um, you know, my IP. Your, I, your ISP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, it's all good, but you know, and you know, if if that's your thing, you know, it works for certain people. It does. It just doesn't work for everybody, and it has a weird, you know, connotation now because everything's just unraveled. So who knows? Who knows? Oh, that's the, that's the true knows. thing. We we may never know the the true inner workings of it. But okay. Leah's sure trying hard to let us yeah. give us an idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she's working really hard to get that book out there, Troublemaker. And of course, you know, she's not the only one working hard out there. There's a lot of women on this list of the highest paid musicians, female for 2015, uh, top 10, really no one on this list is like a huge surprise except kind of one for me, but not the first one. The first one is Katy Perry. She's the highest paid woman in music. She's of course had her tour, the Prism tour or whatever it's called. And she made 135 million this year. Mm -hmm. And she's smart because she made 2 million per city on a 126 show tour. Oh my God, could you imagine two two million dollars for a night of your life Ugh. that's it it's the dream that's although it. I and must... everything's done for you you literally you show up you go through the steps it's like britney she yeah. walks she walks then she changes and then she gets in some type of vessel when it moves her <laughs> to the other side of the stage and you know cha-ching two yeah. mil yeah just it just pours into her bank account you know i was actually a little surprised that carrie uh katie came out right as number one, mm -hmm. um, I really thought it would be more like Taylor Swift because Taylor yeah. Swift has been just blown up this year, and she had the whole 1989 tour. Yeah, and, and the album sold 3.5 yes. mil copies. Yes, and I just read something on her that she makes like a million dollars a minute or something sickening like oh that. Oh my god! Yeah, so I was really expecting her yeah. to be number one on this list. Well, what? she's number two at 80 million so she's you know I, I, but yeah that, that's a I mean like I hear you that's a yeah. big jump with Katie making 135 and now Taylor at 80 yeah. when we all and Taylor's much more prevalent and I feel like she's more on everyone's lips and an advertisement especially right now like when you turn on the radio more. all I'm hearing is Taylor Swift yeah. songs I haven't yeah. heard a Katy Perry song that has been uh, recent as compared right. to Taylor Swift's album yeah. it's like every song is on the radio right mm, now it's true um, the one that surprised me was number three Fleetwood Mac that completely surprised me. Yeah. And Stevie Nicks and Christine yeah. McVie. It's like, uh, what? I know. <laughs> because I haven't even, have I we know. heard them coming to town or what have they been doing? They haven't been on my radar at all. No. I've, I mean, you know, I'm not knocking them, but I feel like those, that would be, you know, Fleetwood Mac would maybe perform at like the Bowl. Right. You know, versus like the Staples Center. Yes. But that's just me. I, it's just not my, you know, it's just not my flavor of music. Really. Yeah. Well, and, and even, even so, like I, I haven't really seen them like come into town mm -hmm. have a have a no. tour have a thing so well, they're another one they've got a deal unlike Katie who makes two million per city they make one million per city so you know a big it's job. a hard life yeah it's a hard job. life for them clearly Gaga <laughs> at number four then Beyonce those two are close Beyonce uh well Gaga made 59, Beyonce made 54.5 I'm surprised to see Beyonce is so not low. within the top three yes completely I would have thought it would go like Taylor Swift, Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. As number two. And then, um, of course, Britney made it on the list, and she made $31 million. And, you know, she just shows up to that Las Vegas tour. I mean, I, I want to go. I, I love her. I want to see it. But I keep saying, like, is it worth me to, like, for, just to see her walk? Is it worth it? Is it, it is. worth it? It is. It is. Okay. It. <laughs> have you seen it? I haven't. But I would. Like, I yeah. consider it worth it. When she, before she re-signed on to this tour that she was doing and she, you know, made it a few more years. 
I was like, damn, if I don't go and see her, I'm going to regret it. You will. So now, because it's extended, I'm like, all right, Grant, now you got to get yourself to Vegas and you yep. got to do this. Me too. That's on my radar as well. Yeah. i got to get to Vegas, see Brittany. My family actually went to Las Vegas fairly recently without me oh. and said it was fantastic. They saw Brittany. Wow. So yeah. now i got to go. <laughs> see, she's got something for everyone. See? <laughs> for well, everyone. <laughs> well, let's talk about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills returning December yes. 1st on Bravo. You know, I love a housewife. I watch them As too much. I, I was I can't get enough sometimes. I well, just yeah. whatever they throw at me, I'm I'm in. It's been a minute since we've seen the Beverly Hills Housewives and I wanna see where things go. So, you know, a lot of them are still there. You know, if they're not, you know, holding the diamond, they're gonna be making an appearance like Crazy Cam and Brandy with her nip slips. Right. Oh, Brandy. How we love her. Yes. I think she's ridiculous and wonderful uh, yeah and so we've got two new cast members this this season um that seem very interesting yeah well one of them seems a little more interesting to me than the other yeah um, <laughs> literally I, this erica seems a little larger than life she might bring something yes. to the table and um catherine i don't know to me maybe this was just a snippet that we saw first look on bravo tv.com this could just be a snippet of course of the whole season but she was on for like 13 seconds and we didn't see her involved in much of anything no no they do seem like very opposing personality types that they're bringing on to this uh this season definitely erica is i think going to be like the pot stirrer mm -hmm. i mean she's very loud and outgoing it seems like she's very flashy she's like something of a pop star she's got yeah, yeah. songs with flow rider and like She's, she's got her boobs to, out. Yeah, and... She's supposed to have a tremendous gay following. So she yeah. performs at all the bars across the nation. And, you know, she's, she's you know, this is only going to help her out. Definitely. And I thought this was interesting. I was doing a little research on her. And she's yeah. married to a, uh, a very highly regarded trial lawyer who's 76. Yes. Ugh. We heard, I heard about <laughs> that. Yeah. So there's a... Uh, there's a storyline there. Yes. And uh, it looks to me like it's going to be Lisa Rinna versus Yolanda. Yes. And, you know, Lisa Rinna doesn't back down from anything. Which these are, are the two cast members that brought these new ladies in, right? Like, Erica is very good friends with Yolanda, mm -hmm. and Catherine is very good friends with Lisa. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like creating teams a little it seems bit like. sometimes it happens on these shows yes. it's either like half and half or it's like one versus 100 yes. i mean it really it's like all all or nothing some of sometimes so we'll see how this one shakes out i'm just glad to see camille Camille's going to be right, an even appearance. for a moment. Yes, I love her. I think I talk about her all the time on the show. I think she's just so classy. She did an interview actually with Entertainment Tonight where she talks about how Kelsey still refuses to talk to her. It's been six years. The woman survived cancer, and even That's through awful. that whole time, he never acknowledged her. It's not terrible. That's awful. So awful. What the hell does she have to do? What's wrong with you, Kelsey? Yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of his, yeah. but and it looks like we're going to have to look at um, Taylor. Yes, we are. It may be for just a moment as I well. I hope it's a moment. I hope, yeah. yeah, I hope it's just a moment because there's really not much to cover with her. There's really not much left of, at all. Yeah. You know, I mean, I wish her well, but, you know, I need to see some content. I do fear that this coming season will be a little light on the drama. I just have a feeling of things I've heard. It's just, it might not be, you know... Well, it probably has to do with the, the ladies that they cast also because I was sort of thinking this when I when I watched the first look and I saw who they added. I feel like there's so many other options of people that could be added to the Beverly Hills mm -hmm. franchise that it's like, I wonder why them. I wonder yeah. why Erica and Catherine. Um, I can think of like five other people that would be right. excellent in this you know, instead. I, I hear that it's not as easy as people think because a lot of women who have money and are in high power with big relationships or big marriages, they don't need it. So they don't want to get involved and tarnish their name or their husband doesn't want them to get involved because they own a big business here or yeah. international. So because of that, they just don't need the platform. Yeah. Or someone like Lisa, while she does have a lot of money, I mean, she used the platform to grow it. Other people, they, you know, if they're living in a you know, hundred million dollar mansion and, you know, Bel Air, what do they need it for? But that's who I want to see. Yeah. That's who I want to see. Truly. On the show. The so. truth of Beverly Hills. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was interesting, too, because um, we saw Brandy for a brief moment sort of 
commiserating and sympathizing with Kyle, which yeah. I thought was extremely interesting because she's always been Team Kim, like since the beginning of all this. So mm-hmm. it really made me wonder, like, is she switching teams? I'm very curious to yeah. see what that conversation was about. Mm-hmm. Oprah's favorite things, the 2015 list has come out. Let's talk about what we find to be ridiculous and what we actually like. Like, I originally looked at this list and I said, like, let's, you know, everything's going to be so stupid. But there were actually a few things that I was interested in. There totally were, yeah. So let's talk about the first thing that I found the most ridiculous was a $49 bamboo box of three kinds of salt. (laughs) Now... Imagine, now, who would you give that gift to? Who would want to be the recipient of such a gift? I think it was kind of, it's all different types of salt you could cook different things with. You know, like you could cook a fish or a different type of meat or like something else. But to me, that was really ridiculous. That retails for $49 on Oprah.com. I know. Amazon, too. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I guess I could give it to somebody I didn't like. Right, unless you you have like a really uber, uber chef. Who's yeah. looking for those spe- specialty salts? I guess. I guess it's a thing. Maybe they flavor your food, like, drastically differently. Maybe. They must for 50 bucks. <laughs> Blake, what yes. are you finding to be ridiculous on this list? Okay, where, so, where do we begin? I know. So there were many, but I feel like when I was compiling my list, I ended up with a theme, which ended up to be, like, animal, ridiculous animal accessories. Okay, yeah. And I love animals. I like them better than people. Um, <laughs> most times. Um, but I find that when people are putting, like, all of these random, awful accessories on their animals, like, I'm not, I find it offensive. I feel okay. like it might mm-hmm. even be animal abuse. I don't know. So, the first thing that I thought was ridiculous was the American Beagle Outfitters Antler <laughs> Beanie. I saw this. It was yes. a beanie that sits on the, the dog's head with the ears coming out, and then, like, little antlers are pointing out the top. And I was like, who needs this? What dog is going to keep that on? None. None that I know. Is it one size fits all? I mean, there's so many different... A Great Dane is not going to wear a hat that a A chihuahua is going to wear. I mean, come on. Yeah. And then wouldn't it be funny if there were sizes? Oh, they're probably, you know, yeah, they're probably yes. I wasn't sure. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, how much was that ridiculous gift? Do we know? I didn't get the price. Oh, I actually did. Had, it was $13. It $13. was a knit hat. And, uh, well, thank, you know. thank God it wasn't like 100 Oh, yeah. Could have been. That was actually, yeah. Well, there were a few reasonably things on this price. list that were not reasonably priced. There were a few things that were absolutely ridiculous. Amazon Echo. Have you seen the commercials for this? Is that the thing like uh, like the voice in her? That yes. Talks to you? It's like, a, it's like a round cylinder speaker, and you can put it anywhere in your house. And there's a little like blue light, and you can talk to it. It's called, it's called Alexa. And, and you can ask questions. It can read audio books from Kindle. I mean, it's, it's, it's useful for some. Perhaps it would be good, you know, for maybe like the blind. But I don't see the need for such a thing. I mean, I, I barely use Siri. And when I do, Siri's never even there to answer my questions. She's never so, helpful for no, me. No, no. She's never helped me, that lady. So this Amazon, this Echo, I, I saw commercials. I said, who needs this? I know that Google has their own version and, and people use it, but not for me. I don't need, I don't, you know what it is? I don't need another thing that I need to charge. No, and it seems like kind of scary too. Like I'm not ready to jump into the, the all encompassing artificial intelligence that is with you 24 seven and helps your life. I don't know. I'm not there yet. No, not really. Not Me neither. And we're of that generation and we're not even there. No, I know. So. I mean, the only thing I'm, I'm there for is the self-driving cars. And oh, yeah. whoever's making those, please send me a demo because I'm sick of driving in this traffic. Oh, me so too. I can't. I send, can't. send two via Grand yeah. Grants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else do you have on that list? Okay. So the next ridiculous thing that I saw, like I said, uh, pet related, was the Park Avenue faux fur pet jacket in Chinchilla. You find that to be ridiculous. So ridiculous. Now, see, I like that. I think that's so over the top. But I mean, I get, I get it's not I your thing. I couldn't take it. I was like, what? Because, you know, <laughs> first of all, a- animals are so hot anyways. They run hot. And here you're putting a faux fur jacket on this poor creature that's probably going to be dying. <laughs> now, if you live in Antarctica or like perhaps, you know, New York and you truly are on Park Avenue when it's snowing and cold, yeah. maybe. But 
all these people in L.A. are going to be like, I need the fur jacket for my dog yeah. when it's 80 degrees outside. Well, that's the thing. Even out of like a 40-degree night, dogs do not need no. a jacket. They have it already. Yeah, they really do. On don't. them. <laughs> if, if it rains here in L.A., and I mean a drizzle, this raincoats are out, some of the dogs have shoes on. Like It's like, these are animals. My God, yeah. it's really ridiculous. And so a chin- I think, but to me, a fake chinchilla coat for a dog is so over the top. I almost need it. I don't even have a dog. <laughs> At first, I saw this Fuji Film Instax Share Smartphone Printer, and it was retailing at three hundred and fifty dollars. I said, I-, I really can't deal with that. That's too much to have. It's like a little white box, and it like you know, it like prints out like the Polaroids. But I enjoy having a real photo. And Oprah on her website said it would be a hit at parties. And if somebody had that, I would use it and I would look at it and I'd say, oh, that's a good thing. Now, I don't live in excess. I'm not going to buy it. It's too expensive anyway. But I think it's a good gift idea. I completely agree. And that's on my good gift list. Yes. Um, I totally liked it. The Fujifilm Instax Share Smartphone Printer. Yes. It's the full title. Yes. Um, I loved it. It's like the modern Polaroid. You know, something about, like, even though we have all of this technology and all of these ways to gather, like, video and and photos at our fingertips, humans like a tangible, tactile piece of something to touch and see and remember and... This gives that. And it's a good giveaway, too, if you're, like, at, like, a, a you know, a shower or you're not in the shower, but like <laughs> at a wedding shower, baby shower, if you're, like, you know, going having a family reunion and it's in the park or something, you know, it's, like, something It's like something to take with you. Completely it's nice. agree. Yeah, I like I it. I liked it. What else are you liking on that list? So I also liked, um, okay, so I'm not going to lie. This is my admission right here. I actually had the salt, uh, the salt combo pack on my like list. Oh, come on. I know. No, it's, I know. it's all good. What does that say about me? Um, because I like to try to be that guy. Like, I like to try to be the chef that cooks mm-hmm. and has, like, fancy ingredients, even yeah. though I don't cook nearly as much mm-hmm. as I would like to or should. Yeah. Um, so that leads me to my next thing is what I liked was the modern sprout garden jar, the three. <laughs> pack of herb essentials yeah it's like what is it, a mason jar and there's like herbs pre-planted in yes, them precisely mm, and let me tell you very I, green of you i know very green. thank you well i tried to embark on this like a few months ago i tried to get those little baby mason jars and try to do like a little herb garden on my windowsill in my kitchen mm-hmm. um but it didn't work out well the thing that i'm looking at is the um what i want actually which is, um, you know, another electronic would be the Beats by Dre wireless headphones, two hundred dollars. I, I think this was like my idea, like years ago. I said, why don't they have wireless Before headphones? Dre. Everyone, especially if you're working out, they get all, you know, tied up if you're trying to do free weights or anything. Like wireless headphones are the way to go. I, I've had my eye on these for a while. They're just too expensive. I know. I um. I th- okay. So I love wireless options, but I feel like they never work for me. Like mm-hmm. I'm the person that it always like won't connect, or the Wi-Fi won't work, or the battery runs out, or I have issues with the wireless. Uh, (laughs) I hear that, yeah. Anything else on the list that you would pick up? I have one more ridiculous thing. Let's have it. There's this chocolate I got there's the there's all this chocolate. It's a turtle basket. Fifteen pounds of chocolate turtles in a five pound chocolate basket. Oh. So that's 20 pounds of chocolate. Who needs that though? And it's not cheap either. $500. Jeez, well, 20 pounds of chocolate. $500. It's probably good chocolate too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Ridiculous. Know. Yeah. Ridiculous. Who, I don't, unless you have a family of 15 coming over for the holidays, maybe. Yeah, who needs it? Maybe at most, <laughs> at most. Well, all these are on, of course, Oprah's list of her favorite things for 2015. Uh, We listed some of the prices. Some of these items have promo codes online, so if you're interested, you can check them out on Oprah.com. You're listening to Grant's Rants. Please rate, subscribe, and share on iTunes and social media. Spread the word. There are a lot more rants to come. Follow us on Twitter at Grant's underscore underscore rants. And now for the one-on-one. Blake, I want to know more about you. Of course, we work together through AfterBuzz, but there's stuff that you do outside of that. And, you know, we connected over the fact that you are, you know, you're trying to go into voiceover and you do it. And, you know, that's just thought that was so interesting. 
you know, and you recently, with, would, you, would you say within the last year, made a kind of a career change? I did, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been pursuing um, hosting and broadcasting for probably three or four years now, but uh, this past year I made a full-time switch into radio, so I work now at a, uh, an NPR station, it's KCRW in Santa mm-hmm. Monica, and um, I produce an afternoon radio show, a weekly afternoon show, so that's my day job, but sort of with it and on the side, um, I do voiceovers, and I'm, I also do voiceovers for the spots at the station, so at any given moment you can turn on the radio and hear one of my spots, but that was sort of um, really something that I want to do, like that's really what I want to be be doing at the radio station, mm-hmm. really anywhere, um, so yeah, it's something that I've been pursuing for a few years, but the last year definitely things have really kind of materialized in some sort of way right. and so I do um, the spots at the station and then I also do like external voiceover stuff from random gigs right. that come up what are some things you do at the station like what are some voiceover you know give us a, a look yeah so um, so what the spots are or any of the advertisers that want to uh, you know pay to have a spot on the radio they mm-hmm. give us copy which is essentially the script of what they want read mm-hmm. and then there's in-house voiceover people at the station to read that script and then that's what's played on the station so it could be any sort of advertiser it could mm-hmm. be like Acura or the Hollywood Bowl or Sony uh, you know in in Uh, promoting all the movies that are here and then they'll have some sort of script and we just have a very set script that we have to read and so we're like KCRW sponsors include and then we say what we need to say and there we go and they're very brief they're 15 second ads Mm -hmm. and um, it is so much fun it's my it's the highlight of my day I bet. I bet. Being able to have that freedom of being like, wait, this is all me. Like, I get to, like, put my spit on this and yeah. I'm part of it and it's being broadcast. It's all real. Yeah, yeah it's true. And it's, it's unique, too, because, especially for me, because all the voiceover people that they have, they, they come in and only do voiceovers. Mm-hmm. But... In my position, like I work there full time, I'm a producer there, but I get to have a tiny break in my day where I'm like, hold up, it's about me. And then I get to go do my voiceover mm-hmm. stuff, which I yeah. find really exciting. Like I really, really enjoy it yeah. um, because ideally I'd like to do that all the time. So keeps it fresh, keeps it fresh. Completely. Yes. So you mentioned earlier that you grew up in Laguna, the Laguna area. Yes. How has living in Southern California with the LA influence, you know, really kind of shaped your life? I feel like it has entirely shaped my life, like quite honestly. So I lived in Orange County, um, grew up, went to, you know, all the way through high school in Orange County. And um, the whole entire time, I just knew that that L.A. and Hollywood was so close to me. Mm -hmm. And when I got into high school especially, I've always been super into music. That's probably my number one passion. So ever since I could drive, I've been going to shows everywhere. So I would be driving up to L.A. like at least three times a week uh, Mm -hmm. going to concerts and shows up here in LA so then that sort of developed into like my my love and my interest of like wanting to be in this industry Mm -hmm. and I sort of have this this thing that I say um, whenever I'm coming down the the 101 entering into Los Angeles I I have this like section on the freeway where I've seen this the skyline and this sort of same visual over and over Mm -hmm. and over every single time I've driven into LA Mm -hmm. and I feel like it represents like like struggle to me because every single time I make that drive, I'm either struggling to find parking and not get a ticket mm-hmm. by going to a show, or I'm struggling because I'm trying to get to an audition on time and like make that audition and yeah. get the gig, or I'm struggling to just put myself out there and get what I really want yeah. uh, and have it come to me. So it's right. like this whole vision of, of LA and like driving down below represents that to me. Mm-hmm. And then like imagining living like, up in the hills or like having a home or something is like when you've really made it. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah, that's how yeah. I decipher mm, the situation. Yeah. It's like a checkpoint for you. Like I have those kind of in my mind. I'm like, the next time I drive by this, what's going to, where is my life going to be? Or how has it changed since I've been here last? Like we all kind of have those things. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, to me, I went to school in Orange County, but this was university, um, and a lot of people didn't make the move to L.A. Do you feel like a lot of people in Orange County stay in Orange County? Yes, I do. I totally do. Um, it's beautiful. 
Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Um, there's parking. There's space. There's like parking lots. Parking you don't have lots. to like take an elevator to go to the grocery store. Like it's it, it is nice. Yeah, it's super nice. And back in the day, like I would say, ten to fifteen years ago, you could easily commute from Orange County to LA, and it wouldn't be a problem. Like if you wanted to work or you know audition or go to gigs or whatever, you could easily commute to LA and then be back in Orange County in your spacious, comfortable residential mm-hmm. area. Yeah. So you know that's kind of the appeal and having grown up there i loved it like it really was a fantastic place to grow up it was beautiful and wonderful but nothing happens there so Mm -hmm. the whole draw of los angeles like you know was pulling at me very early on yeah well that's the thing it's like to me i always was like i don't understand it like one of the biggest cities with so much opportunity and so much to do is right here. Like, I don't understand why people don't make that move. And I have a friend who keeps saying he's going to move and he never does. And he still lives in Orange County from where, where we went to school and he's, he comes up here. But it's like, why don't you just do it? Like, is it ever going to happen? Because, like, what are you waiting on? You know, it's like inevitable. To me, it was like, to me, it was like obvious that I would make the move after school to L.A. Like, it wasn't even a question. Yeah. So, but, you know, to some people, I guess maybe it's financial or just, you know, they like that lifestyle. Yeah. And that's good. But I to mean, me, it, I'm a big city person. Totally. And that's the thing is it just, it really is comfortable. Like, it really is a, like, a beachy, just, just like, residential vibe. And yeah. it's hard to leave because, you know, truly, it is it is comfortable and lovely. So it's like you you... Imagine leaving that and coming into traffic and smog and hustle and bustle and just and create and, par- and paying to park everywhere yeah. and pay, like paying for everything money 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 money. But then in Orange County, it's the complete opposite. So I feel like that's probably the delineation. Right. It's so close to one another, mm-hmm. yet really in theory so far yeah. apart. <laughs> like I feel I have my good years now where I have the patience to deal with all of this and like I, I have that now. But, like, I, I'm not going to want to do that later on. And that's why it was so important to me to be able to move to live in the middle of the city mm-hmm. because I want to have that experience. But it's just, like, you know, even now I'm, yeah. like, <sighs> right. like, coming over here, it took me 12 minutes to drive less than a mile. And I hit every single light, oh, literally man. every single light. Like, I pull out from my neighborhood, and then 20 feet from that street is another red light. Hit that light. <laughs> Then you go another 50 feet, and then there's the red light. Then you hit the main street. Of course, you're going to hit that light. It's just like, it's just too much. It is a lot. It is a lot. It's too much. To deal with. Truly, yeah. I know. And then, you know, that that's the thing is like driving from L.A. down to Orange County takes you X amount of time. That driving from Santa Monica to Burbank takes you the same amount of time when it shouldn't. Yeah, it should take you... <laughs> 20 or 30 minutes to get there and instead it takes you an hour and a half Mm -hmm. which is the same amount of time it takes to get home to Orange County so it's it's really tough Um, and it's like so expensive in LA too that's the that's the most unfortunate thing is that rent is and cost of living is just rising and Orange County is more affordable Mm -hmm. it's Um, true the struggles. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the struggles since it's so real here. Um, I, you know, I want to know, tell me a story um, when, you know, you really kind of like, you know, you're like, how much more do, can I do this? How much more can I keep putting myself out there going on these auditions or answering these calls? Like, you know, how do you keep motivated? So I would say probably my lowest point was like two, mm, three years ago. I would say three years ago. And what happened was I, I was working at a law firm. And I decided to um, change careers. Like I decided I wanted to go into broadcasting. Mm -hmm. So I reduced my hours completely and I started just like putting myself out there and going on gigs and really trying to do stuff to further my new career. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't getting anything. I was getting nowhere Mm -hmm. and I couldn't pay for anything. I was not making money because I had made that decision to cut my hours and um, it was awful. It was like the yeah. hardest time because financially it was just, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. Yeah. So at that point I was just like, oh man, this is really serious. I've been trying to do this for a little while. Nothing's really happening. What am I going to do? It was at that point that I ended up, um, like thankfully getting a part-time job at the radio station that I work at now. Mm. And I feel like that was my little moment of like hope and clarity because mm. even though it wasn't much, um, I finally got something right. in the industry that I'd been working for. So I was like, perfect. Let me keep doing this. I kept working super, super hard for the last three years. 
And over the last three years, I ended up getting my my full time job in radio that I wanted, um, and then all my stuff on the side. I now do uh, hosting. I do consistent hosting um, at various red carpet events, namely the Newport Beach Film Festival. Um, I hang out at AfterBuzz TV mm-hmm. with yeah. you, Grant, um, and we do all kinds of fun shows and coverage there. And I, you know, I do voiceovers, and mm-hmm. that's really something that I've been trying to pursue for a while too. So it's taken a long time, yeah. and and I wouldn't even say that I'm really far in the game yet, but I feel like I've laid a really good foundation in in the direction that I'm trying to go. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It sounds like it. And it's no short, like no quick, like, oh, it just happened. Like you had to no. really, years really and work. Years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm always thinking like re- re- recalculating and planning like uh, things out. Like, you know, did you have that opportunity when the radio station came up? Was that really kind of like the break that you were waiting for? Or was it kind of like, okay, this is an opportunity that I can take to get closer to that breakthrough? Yes, it was not a breakthrough. Mm-hmm. It was like a tiny glimmer of hope. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that I was able to say like, okay, this tiny thing happened now, which is mm-hmm. wonderful. And it really isn't affecting my life in any significant way, but I feel like it's going yeah. to. So I s- just stuck yeah. with it. And that's so LA. There's very few opportunities where you get, and it's like, this is going to change everything. This is everything you've worked towards. It's always steps. I and mean, there's always exceptions. Like if you know, if you get like a contract role on a sitcom, like, great. Yeah, you're going to get great representation. You're set. But for the most part, for people our age that are, you know, just, you know, really have like goals and they're hustling. It's like nobody has that. Like I I expected after graduating to have that moment where I'm like, this is the best day of my life. This, I, I got it. And it's like, it's, it's not. It's a long road. Yeah, it is a long, long road, road of the 101. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly at rush hour. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's so many little jobs jobs you get along the way like I've, I've done so many um just little 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 pieces here and there and extra work and just various things that also you you go into it so hopeful because you think like oh like who am I going to meet here and what casting director is this under and am I going to get more work out of it and is this mm-hmm. going to happen is that going to happen and typically no <laughs> typically no yeah. uh, it's not going to lead to anything else unless like you said you do land some amazing audition right. or you've made your way through to some super awesome agent, whatever the case may be that gets you these big jobs that we're all trying to get, until you get to that point, it's really no consistency. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of struggle and no consistency. Yeah. You know? And it's really just like... True. This sounds so cliche, but it's really just how much you want it. I really think mm-hmm. so. I think like, so too. It's, it's like hanging on as long as you can hang on. Yeah. For, yeah. It is. It's like I was thinking. It's like hang on to like a plane. Like you're either gonna like lose it all, or if you hold on a little longer, someone will open the door and get you, pull you back. That is in. a perfect example. Yes. It's like the plane is in the air, yeah. going a million miles an hour, and you're literally just hanging underneath to the wheels, and yeah. you're just like, grasping, and like your fingers are it's slipping. It's treacherous. And it's, <laughs> it's just you're getting things thrown. At you. You're almost dying. <laughs> but you're like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And sure enough, I think, you know. Someone throws you an oxygen yeah. mask. Hallelujah. And, you know, <laughs> tenacity pays off. Um, persistence pays off. Mm-hmm. These things that you hear are true. Like, you know, I, I, do, I do think that just really keeping yourself in the scene and, like, in and around the places that you want to be and, like, completely manifesting manifesting it in your mm-hmm. mind. Like, it sounds bizarre, but truly, I mean, if you really just, like, put yourself there mentally, I feel like that's going to guide you to right. the actions that you're trying yeah. to do. See, I've practiced that in my own way, but then I, it just leads to severe disappointment sometimes. I, like, you know, I, put, I practice the secret. Like, I'm like, this is my job. This is what I'm <laughs> going to be doing. And then it's just for, for stupid reasons, for, like, oh, we don't have the budget for the role, or somebody, we have, a, you know, we had a, a uh, you know, an intern take the position, and then that's the stuff that just kills me because it's like you know I've, I put out as much energy as I can, but it's just not none of this is in our control. None of it, and that's, and that's what's so thing. hard. Yeah, and that's not to say that like even imagining success and doing these things will bring it to you. I mean, Lord knows I'm still waiting for more on my mm-hmm. end. But um, yeah, I just I do think that you know y- if years of of just putting yourself out there because that's another thing too is I I grew when I grew up I suffered from severe anxiety mm-hmm. severe well, I would like, never so, know that about yeah, you yeah and uh, so many people have said that and I really had like an epiphany or like a breakthrough after college um, all the way up through college I could not speak in front of a group of people I could not 
I could not, I couldn't give a speech in front of class. It was like awful to even ask a question. Mm -hmm. It was just very hard for me. So uh, I had this like epiphany and I don't know what happened in me, but something completely changed and I went complete 180 and I decided I wanted to pursue broadcasting and now none of that affects me and I've and I've you know now I'm I'm in a place where I can put myself out there years ago I wasn't and I think that was the thing that held me up was that I had these dreams of like grand ideas and things that mm-hmm. I wanted to do but no means to get there like yeah. in inside of me I had issues and concern and anxiety and problems and whatever and when I finally got to the point of I don't know what maturity or whatever right. to break free of it it changed everything and I, I was love able that. yeah and I was able to like put myself out there and find what it was that I actually wanted to do and what I was good at and what I could you know right. reasonably excel at um, to make it so that I could have some form of success one day, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I still am on that path and I'm hoping to get yes. very soon. <laughs> now, uh, something similar that we both share, our families are very involved and they're very much cheerleaders of, of ours. And, um, you know, they don't necessarily work in the business. So it's tough to be able to explain and, you know, like my mom says to me, like, well, when do you just kind of say enough is enough? And I'm like, well, you, d- you don't. Like, you just can't. There's always another person to meet. There's always another path to take. You know, you go into the window or you go into the back door or you try to figure it out. It's like a sickness we yeah. have, Grant. And I can't let go of it. <laughs> it's like a delusion. I, I can't let go yeah. of it. I'm no, telling it, you. It's true. And I have that same problem. And uh, my mom says the same thing. She says, um... Well, why aren't you Julian Arancic right now? <laughs> yeah. Like, why aren't you there right now? Having worked, you yeah, know, having yeah, been yeah. trying to get there for a few years. And I'm like, it, it took her forever realize, to get there. Yeah, do like, you this is hard that? work every single day. Yeah. So, you know, they, mm-hmm. they're very excited for us and they're very mm-hmm. excited when we have success and when things are going our way. But then when, when stuff's taken a while, they yeah. are the ones that get a little yeah, impatient. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've gotten to the point where I, I just feel guilty even delivering any type of news if it isn't positive because right. it's like they're just they're waiting like my mom is like waiting by the phone for like things to change and stuff and I'm like I don't know like you know they're gonna change when they change it's right. just like it's gonna happen when it's gonna happen and you know we are lucky that we're in positions where we're not on the outside looking in you know we are in good places and you know we just need to find that patience but it's hard when you're an ambitious person so hard it's I like, have zero patience in my like, soul yeah. I was not born a patient person yeah. Yeah. I'm always thinking, so, well, now what's next? And it's not because I'm unhappy or I'm being totally impatient or childish. It's just that that's how I feel you have to be in this business. Mm-hmm. You're only as good as your last project. You but have you know, to be working at all yeah, times. But it's weird, too, because it's like there's, there's a strange mix of um, patience that you need but also ambition that you need. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're constantly riding the balance of of when to sit there and shut up and take whatever's happening to you or completely like usurp the situation and just be like, F you, I'm doing it myself. I'm not waiting for anyone else to to help me. Story of my life. (laughs) Yes. It's it's a blessing and a curse. Truly. Yes. I think what's so unique about your story and mine, and and of course, a lot of the uh, different guests, the guest co-hosts on Grants Rants, is that we're all coming up through this industry now, in 2015, with the reality, you know, we're post-2008, you know, everything is like, you know, moving in different directions digitally. And of course, we hear from a lot of people who are very successful and in high positions, but they all got moved in those roles and was able to climb the ladder, were able to climb the ladder at a very different time. And not just like a, the economy, the business, the business is different. Completely. No, completely. And it's so funny because my, that's something that my parents would always say to me is, um, you know, they're anxious of why I'm, things aren't, you know, happening. And then they're like, oh, well, you need to just go knock on the door. Knock on the door of, yeah. of the studio and deliver your resume. Or just drop whatever. it off. Yeah. You know, because in 1972, likely you could. And yeah. you could and, just go. And there probably would be jobs, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, they, you know, our parents <laughs> come from this thinking of just like, get out there and do it and just yeah. you know everything is is an arm's length away my dad but, too yes. Yeah, yes yeah and it's just so funny because it's like no 
Everything is gated to oblivion. You can't yeah. even get into the front no, office of whatever you're trying to no. do. Everything is electronic. Everything yeah. is sender email, sender resume, whatever. And it goes it gets absolutely lost. nowhere. Completely. It goes nowhere. Yeah. It's all formality. It's, that's all that it, it is. It really is. And it really comes down to who you know and how hard you work and what, like, where, what you get into, essentially, from both of those combined. It's true. And, yeah, like you're saying when we hear from... Uh, very successful people, high high ups in a studio or whatever, yeah. and they're talking about you know their success or what yeah. they had as their first job. It's like, all right, none of that's relevant now. I know N- nothing like, you're well, saying is helping me like, now. And not only that, someone's first job was like, oh, my first job was J.J. Abrams' assistant. Now that is no one's first job. <laughs> that, I mean, come on. And if it is, you're not telling us who you knew. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't think they got that. Just you know, applying and going through the interview process. Yeah, that sadly doesn't just fall into your lap. Well. Let's talk about what you've been up to and what you have to promote. Where can we find you? What's going on? Yes. So, um, I, of course, I'm on After Buzz TV. You can find me there uh, on, on many different shows. They change very often. Yes. Uh, so, just tune in and you'll find uh, me. And really, what you can find, what I'm up to, is on my social media. I update it every day. I'm there every day. I would love to hear from you and see what's going on. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Blake V Media. And uh, you can also look for me in the future at the Newport Beach Film Festival. I host nice. Red Carpet every single year there, so I look forward to it. And, um, and do, I'm, don't you assist an 80s band? I do. Yes. I do. Yes, the <laughs> Reflex, an 80s cover band, uh, an Orange County-based band, yeah. who are awesome, by the way. Um, I, I host their shows. I host their shows. <laughs> and we've got some awesome videos up on the Reflex channel on YouTube, which are super fun. So check them out. Nice. Check me out. Grant, this has been wonderful. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy you had me on. I, I'm so glad that you came in. We talked about a, a multitude of things, didn't we? We covered it all. From dogs and chinchilla to the true Hollywood struggle. You're only going to get that here on Grant's Rants. Please rate and subscribe. Of course, leave me a review on iTunes. That will help more people discover the rants. Until next time, the ranting will continue on social media. This has been Grant's Rants. Follow us on Twitter at Grant's underscore underscore Rants. Cover art created by Howie Rone. Voiceover by Sir Richard Wentworth. Original theme music composed by Alexander Arnson. Granted Wish Productions 2015.